zero bedside 2020? Well, yeah, I know, that doesn't really tell you much, does it? So what was a zero in 2010? It was a fancy alarm clock. It uh, had a, an EEG sensor that we would, a reusable one you'd wear on your forehead in a little, with cloth uh, electrodes and a little sensor pod. You would sleep and then uh, it would uh, estimate your sleep stage based off of where it could get from the headband. And if it detected you're in an optimal stage for waking, a half an hour before your uh, actual alarm time, it would set off the alarm early. And so it had, at this point, it was just this one alarm clock model with a physical clock. It had an SD card. If you wanted more than the tiny summary of data on your uh, phone, on your clock display, you would take the SD card out and upload the data to their website where they would decode it and put stuff up. Another thing you could do that they also mentioned in the stuff that shipped with it was install an alternate firmware, which gave you unencrypted data logged to the SD card and enabled uh, this little port in the back, this little weird one, and they gave you pinouts that you could then use to uh, build a special USB cable and they provided a Python library so that uh, it would talk to this alarm clock over USB serial and you could get the raw data out of it to, in real time. What is it in 2010? Well, it's pretty much just a fancy, it's just an alarm clock really. The Zero Mobile and Pro, which came out later, are pretty much useless hunks of plastic and metal because like, the apps are unsupported and uh, no more uh, consumables. Because what happened? The company that made it went out of business a few years ago. They no longer make the headbands. Uh, there isn't a company that's picked up on it. The apps, of course, no longer work because they haven't been updated in so long. And as part of the company going out of business, the, web went, the website went down. There's no more web services. So who was the community who ended up really picking up on this, though? Because it was an expensive alarm clock that made you wear a headband. Well, the quantified self movement really loved this thing because it was the one sleep tracker that uh, used EEG input as opposed to a little uh, wristband actigraph or laying your cell phone on your bed and based off of the gyroscope the accelerometer detecting whatever movement thinking you're moving. And uh, so they liked this one because they got presumably better data. Now, more recently, the ResMed came out with a device uh, that you don't have to wear anything or put anything on your bed, where they actually have uh, more of a, I think they used a microwave uh, motion sensors uh, to estimate the sleep stage instead based off of your breathing, but again, even more proprietary. <laughs> you have their special apps and websites and it has to be positioned in such a way within this far of you and it has to face your chest so it can estimate your breathing and your sleep stage based off of that. So the community's response, because quantified selfers, uh, they can be quite motivated when there's something that they want, a bit obsessive at times. So, well, once, it got, once they found out that the company was going out of business, they rushed over to the website to download their data because they want it. They want to quantify it. To some people actually went and drove to a replacement Android app. I saw some of the source on GitHub, although uh, that one uh, they mentioned it, it won't run on the current Android, but okay. And then as for the consumables, because the big consumable for it was actually the soft cloth headband, because the, the fabric EEG sensor, well, it would wear out with time. So, and then inside the hard pods that would attach to the headband, you had a rechargeable battery. They also die with time. Well, people took it into their own hands. 
they would hack open the sensor pods with kitchen knives and cut out the batteries and solder in replacements or come up with a, a little way to just plug it in instead. They, uh, one of the users even went and published to Instructables a set of instructions on how to make replacement soft fabric headbands complete with templates because the two different sets of hardware had slightly different uh, positioning of things like the little snaps to plug in the sensor pods. Other people went and found that, hey, this thing actually works with real EEG electrodes. I mean, <laughs> the cost adds up if I use them as intended and replace them and only one use, but it turns out I can actually use this one, these ED electrodes for two weeks or so without, or without replacing them. <laughs> and so, well, what's happening now? Yeah, some people are still using it. They're buying what used stock to get the devices. Uh, they're hacking things open to do their own little hardware hacks. They're making their own little replacements. And yeah. So it still exists in, to an extent today. So, yeah. Amazon.ca has one of them. They're new for $641. <laughs> so maybe there's more for me to make them. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I still have one on my nightstand. I might still even have new in-wrapper uh, headbands in my nightstand. I haven't checked. <laughs> You might be able to sell it off eBay. <laughs> oh yeah, and I mean, my one even has the modified, the, it also has the firmware on it that lets you use the serial port and unencrypted data files. <laughs> yeah. Is there a reason, is there a lot of guts to this system? Could somebody make them? Like the quantified self movement is full of people who can build Arduino things and, and so on. So the big thing with uh, the Zio as to why it would be a challenge for a user to just go and replace it. The hardware isn't the hard part. The software is. So on the, the alarm clock itself, because I'm less familiar with the mobile version, which uh, the headband used Bluetooth to talk to your phone, but with uh, the bedside clock version one, the clock, it, they had the hardware in the clock that was determining which sleep stage you're in and then writing a summary of that to a, your SD card. So it was doing the sleep stage analysis, and that analysis is the challenging part. That has to be easier now on, uh, uh, because we have better uh, data systems. Uh, well, uh, in part... Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. Yeah, but where would you get the data to determine what signals correspond to what sleep stage. Just look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you can create a, 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 a Raspberry Pi or whatever it is to just pick up raw data. And because you've got timing associated with it, you can then compare it with what the other one said. And based on the raw data, define that set. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how do you define light sleep? No, that's the point. You're reverse engineering. You're reverse engineering. You have an existing system, and so you can look at the raw data and the, 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 like the, like the summarized data and figure that out. <laughs> or, or consult a sleep physician. No, or, poly, or polysonography tech, because they're the ones who might do the actual uh, look at it. Too now. But <laughs>